Welcome to the Living Lab lecture series. The topic of today's presentation is AI and process mining. So let's start with an introductory example. We have three bakers with three different bakery goods, a bread, cinnamon buns, and a cake. Each of these bakery goods has its own recipe that's simple. But what happens when there are different versions of each type of baked good and recipes have many variations? So different kinds of bread, different kinds of cinnamon buns, and different kinds of cakes. This leads to a multitude of recipes that often share the same foundation, but can also differ enormously. Due to the many possible variations of a single recipe, consisting of overlays and forks, the baking process can become intransparent and look like this. This is a so-called spaghetti process. But before we talk about how such a process can be made leaner and how AI can help, let's talk briefly about some basics. The type of process being considered here are business processes. A business process is a sequence of value-added activities with one or more inputs and an output that creates customer value. So for example, a tasty cinnamon bun. Another example would be a customer represents a demand. He orders something. A waiter takes this order and forwards it to the kitchen. A cook prepares the customer's desired order and issues the product. The customer pays his bill, which is processed by the cashier. So here we can see the data we work with. It's a so-called event log. So an event log can be extracted from different information systems like ERP systems and consists of a sequence of cases. And those cases, again, consists of a sequence of events. And each event refers to a case, an activity, a timestamp, and other resources or attributes. And each activity represents a concrete process step, for example, paying the bill. Now we come back to our spaghetti process. So the question is how we get from this to this, so a leaner version of this process. And one answer to this question is process mining. So process mining is basically a link between model-based analysis methods like business process improvement or business process management and data-centric analysis methods like machine learning or statistics. So and process mining is uh, to identify, monitor, analyze, and improve processes by extracting existing process knowledge, so in the form of an event log, from information systems. And we have three different process mining activities. So the first activity is process discovery. So with process discovery, we try to discover process models from the underlying event log. With process conformance checking, we try to check if a process model is as it should be. And process enhancement means we try to enrich an existing process model with additional informations. So here you can see the process mining lifecycle. On the top left, you can see the real world, like business processes, people, and organizations. This real world controls different software systems. Those software systems record the events happening, like messages or transactions. Those events are summarized in a so-called event log. And with the help of this event log, we can perform different process mining activities, like discovery, conformance checking, and enhancement. And based on the obtained process models, we are able to analyze and model the real world. So in the context of process mining, the analysis of event data becomes more and more important. And the number of application areas requiring real-time analysis is increasing, for example, in production processes or supply chain processes. And the dynamic analysis places new demands on common process mining techniques. So the most important thing to have is a clean data set that represents the underlying process the right way. And for this, a procedure is needed that detects outliers in this data. So outliers could be, for example, insert. So that means up to three random activities were inserted into the case. A rework, a sequence of up to three events has been executed twice. Early, a sequence of up to two events was executed too early. And late, a sequence of up to two events was executed too late. So we could have more different kinds of anomalies, but those are just examples. And to deal with those outliers, we need a method that is able to detect 
and filter them. So here we see a simple example of the anomalies described. So the blocks marked in red represent process steps that correspond to an anomaly. We can see an early execution, a late execution, and a rework of a process step. So in those process steps need to be identified and reordered. So to meet the above named challenges, we first designed the Lambda architecture for the purpose of real-time process mining with an embedded anomaly filter. So the Lambda architecture itself consists of three different layers. The batch layer to process historical data, the speed layer to process and filter event streams in real time, and a serving layer for merging of batch and speed layer for online and offline process mining activities. Here we can see uh, the schematic representation of our filter architecture. So we have an infinite event stream with incorrect event data. And events are passed to an anomaly filter in the form of batches. And those anomalies are filtered by a neural network based on a dynamic threshold. And the output stream again uh, can be used for downstream online process mining activities like discovery, conformance checking, or enhancement. Now I want to describe um, the neural network or the basic filter architecture. So for the input layer, we have an event sequence X as an input. And this event sequence um, represent, is represented by a case and is encoded uh, via a very efficient node to vec encoding. And in addition to that, we added some Gaussian noise to the input sequence for better generalizability of the model. So the Gaussian noise is added only during training phase. And the training data is slightly modified, making the model less fit to the training data and increasing generalizability. The second layer is the encoder. So the encoder consists of the bidirectional LSTM and generates a sequence of hidden states based on the input sequence. And the hidden states represent the memory of the LSTM and are determined from the input of the current calculation and the output of the previous calculation step through which dependencies between process steps can be modeled. Now we have a layer consisting of a self-attention and a variational layer. So first I want to talk about the variational layer. So the variational layer generates the distribution parameters mean and standard deviation from the hidden states of the encoder and it generates the Latin vector Z. And Z contains parameters about the probability distribution of the sequence under consideration. So in the variational layer learns the probability distribution of the data and gives us precise control over the Latin representation. The self-attention layer is passing contextual information from the encoder hidden states to the decoder, and it generates context vectors as a weighted sum of the incoming hidden states. So the self-attention layer allows to selectively capture relevant information and to increase the performance of sequence-to-sequence -sequence models and helps to minimize the problem of vanishing gradients. The decoder again uh, is represented by the by, by bidirectional LSTM. The input is the context are the context vectors and the latent representation Z over all time points. The output of our neural network is a reconstruction of the distribution parameters mean and standard deviation from the hidden states of the decoder. We conducted an experiment, and for this experiment, we used four different data sets. Two synthetic data sets generated by the PLG2 tool, so a multi-perspective process randomization tool, and two real-world data sets provided by the Business Process Intelligence Challenge about a Dutch hospital process and the incident management of Volvo IT Belgium. So the results we obtained in comparison to the most relevant related work are pretty good. We could increase the F1 score for the anomaly detection task. Uh, on the button, you can see one approach with a higher F1 score, but this approach just work with synthetic data, which tend to be not as complex as real-world data. 
So to better illustrate the obtained results, here's a heat map uh, for the first synthetic data set. So lighter blocks are assigned a lower reconstruction error and have a low probability to be classified as an anomaly. Darker blocks have a higher reconstruction error and are therefore have a higher probability to be classified as an anomaly. Example one shows the anomaly class early. Activity J occurs under a normal process behavior later in the process and is therefore correctly assigned a high reconstruction error by the classification model. By a review of the known activities, activity D is suggested as a replacement for activity J since it receives the lowest reconstruction error of all considered activities for this position. In example two, activity E is assigned to the late anomaly class because it had been positioned earlier in the process. It would have been assigned a lower reconstruction error that would no longer have designated the activity as an anomaly. Example three shows an example of the anomaly class insert. For this, a random activity Z was inserted into the process, which is not known to the classification model and would not receive a reconstruction error at any position in the process that would be below the threshold. So using a set of rules corresponding to the inserted anomalies, insert, rework, early and late, the identified anomalies are assigned to the different anomaly classes. And these rules are as follows. So for insert, an activity is classified as an anomaly and is not assigned a reconstruction error below the anomaly threshold at any position in the process. The rule for rework is the same activity appears earlier in the process and is not marked as an anomaly. The rule for early, an activity marked as an anomaly is assigned a lower reconstruction error when executed later in the process, which no longer classifies the activity as an anomaly. And the rule for late is an activity that is flagged as an anomaly is assigned a lower reconstruction error when executed earlier in the process, which no longer classifies the activity as an anomaly. For this process, here we can see the discovered process model. First, the target process model. Second, the process model with anomalies. And the third is the filter process model. So to get a better idea of what has changed after applying the filter, we can have a look at another heat map. So here we can see the difference between the difference between unfiltered process on the left-hand side and the filtered process on the right-hand side. So green marked blocks are in the right order, red marked blocks are still in the wrong order. So due to a high variance of the processes and less available data, it is hard to detect all of the anomalies. So what else we are working on? So we are developing methods to apply such technologies to real-time business process data streams. We also want to make the results from the use of deep neural networks interpretable by developing explanatory components that open those black boxes. And in the future, we want to use multi-model data. So for example, process descriptions, video sequences, etc., to increase the accuracy of classification. So what should you take home? So a business process can become really complex, especially if the process contains a lot of variations. Process mining combines process-oriented and data-centric analysis methods and help to better understand those complex business processes. Sometimes the process event data contains outliers so that the underlying process can't be represented and analyzed properly. AI can help to learn structures in event data. And with deep learning based approaches, we are able to identify outliers in the business process and to improve downstream process mining tasks. So here are the references I used. Thank you for your attention and feel free to ask questions.